Hi, I'm Pruno. Thanks for watching ePlan Essentials. Have you ever placed a component in ePlan Pro Panel and the component missed the 3D macro? In today's video, I'm going to show you a step by step tutorial how to create a 3D macro. All right, do you recognize following scenario? You have downloaded components from the ePlan data portal or somebody created parts for you in your parts database and you are about to place the component in ePlan Pro panel. We are drag and drop, you're placing the circuit breaker and to your surprise, there is no 3D geometry. On a footnote, you don't have to be worried even without a 3D geometry you could utilize this component in ePlan and create reports and send data for manufacturing machines. But it does look nicer if the component has a 3D uh, macro. So in this exercise today, I'm going to show you how to create step by step in seven easy steps uh, your own 3D macro. So the first part is called data mining. Data mining means essentially finding the step file needed in order to create your macro. This may be even the most time consuming part of those seven steps because you have to find the right file. In order to answer the question where to get this, this may be the art. So I would always recommend the first site to go to the manufacturer's homepage and try to download the step file. If you cannot find it on the manufacturer's homepage, Maybe you can look at trace parts online or cadenas or other files. If you cannot find it there, maybe you have a mechanical department which can draw a step file for you. So in today's exercise, I'm using this Eaton circuit breaker here. And I'll try to find on Eaton homepage um, a step file. So we are using Google here. As you see, I just entered the part number and step file. And the first page here is datasheet.eaton.com. We click here. We see the parts information, like in this case, the specification. There is the overview of the component. And we can find here resources. And then the resources is cat data. And by trial and error, I figured out that this file here, CS, is the step file I'm looking for. So we downloaded the step file. So after the data mining is done, it's time to import the component in a macro project. So for this, we are going back to ePlan. I have here a macro project 3D components already ready. And now we will press file import, layout space, step. Here we will select this step file and ePlan will start the import, create the layout space and place the step file in the layout space. What I will definitely recommend you to do before importing is to set up the project settings. I'm gonna show you what I mean with this. By default, under File Settings, Project Name Management 3D Import, the degree of detailing is set to the first step. And I will recommend you always to put it on the highest level because then you have the best quality of data in ePlan Pro Panel. This is how the best quality of data look like. I created previously an import here with level one, right? And as you can see, the circles are hexagonal, right? It's still a usable data. The file will be slightly smaller. If you are happy with this, then you can keep the first level. Um, if you would like rather have a nicer round circle, then you can um, move uh, the bar to the high and get a or higher degree of detail. So 
now that we have imported the file, it's time for the second step, and that's defining the macro. So as you see here under logic item, uh, the layout space, it's called number one. We will go here on properties, and I would always recommend you to call the name of the layout space as the part which we are using here. And here under macro name, we will select the location where we would like to save the macro afterwards. So we will go here on the folder, select the right folder. So I will go here on the ETN and now define the file name. What I always recommend to do is use as a file name the order number underscore 3D. With this, you will know what is the macro used for, and with underscore 3D, um, that's a 3D macro. When you press open, you see here is the macro now, macro name now set up, and we can press OK. After we have defined the macro, it's time to do the next step. The next step is defining the placement area. As the placement area, you can understand the surface on which this component will be placed on. Will it be placed on a mounting panel? Will it be placed on a mounting rail, on side panel or, or door? In our case, this circuit breaker will be placed on a mounting rail. And for this reason, when we rotate the component, we know that this surface here will be the placement area. So, how to define the placement area? Under Insert, Placement Area Define. If you press this, you see the software showing you yellow surfaces. And as I mentioned before, now you have to just define the placement area which you would like to utilize. After you click the placement area, you see a green plane around the component on the, on the height of the placement area and automatically the software will create nine blue points around the edges, so-called handle points. And there is one orange point that's the first handle point already defined. What I recommend, but it's not necessary, uh, to delete handle points which you, which you don't need, right? So in my case, I will just hover over those handle points, delete them, rotate the component to the top, and delete those handle points. Okay? So if we take a controlling look from the southeast isometric, the component looks good. Um, this handle is here on the right side. Now it's time for the next step. The next step is the fifth step, and that's defining the handle point if needed. So, or what you can understand as handle point is the first point where the component will be grabbed when it will be placed on the placement area uh, on your mounting rail. So in our case, we go here to Southwest Isometric, and we know that this is this point, right? But just to be sure, I will confirm this by placing my manual handle point on top of it. So with insert, on the mounting ends you have handle. So, and I know that um, this circuit breaker is centered on the mounting rail. And how to place something centered in Eaton Pro panel? By holding the control button. So holding control, selecting this point here, and this point will center the orange handle point. And as you see, it's right above the blue. Okay, now that we have created the, uh, or defined the placement area and defined the handle point, we could additionally create a connection point pattern I already created a video on how to define a connection point pattern, and I will link it now. If we don't want to create a connection point pattern, we can now jump to 
the step of creating the macro. So how to create the macro? As we remembered, we assigned the macro before, and now it's time under master data to press generate automatically in order to create the macro. Here we have another time the confirmation, which macros will be considered. In our, our case, only the layout space. We don't want to apply to the entire project. So now the macro is created. The next step is, and that's the last step, assign the macro to the component. And this can be done under master data, management. Here we just need to know the part number and press enter and assign the macro. The 3D macros are called graphic macros. So you can now either search here by macro and as you see here, the first field is graphical macro and there is no value assigned yet. So we will press here this folder and assign the macro which we just created. It's under ETN and here is the macro we just created. We will press apply and close. Here we will sync with the macro project and now we'll go back to this project here. We will delete this and this is now step eight, place the component. Um, before this, I will make sure that this project consists of the last uh, part information. So I will update and complete here. And now if we insert this uh, component again, we will see the macro. These were seven easy steps on how to create component macros in ePlan Pro Panel. This wraps up today's ePlan Essentials video. Let me know in the comments below which other ePlan Pro Panel related topics you would like to see. Also, if you find this video beneficial, please make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel and share it in your community. Until the next time, Uncle Kruno signed out.